What's up, everybody? You are listening to True Fatherhood Stories. I'm your host, Jay Brew. Um, This is the first episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, We're going to have lots and lots of amazing guests uh, this first season. Uh, But this is the first episode, so I'm just going to break down, you know, why I started this podcast, tell you a little bit about myself, and, uh, you know, maybe have a a story at the end of of this episode here. That is the goal, uh, to talk to different dads each week from all walks of life. And, uh, you know, at the end of each episode, we're going to have a a story. And I think uh, you guys will really, really enjoy it. So again, thanks for tuning in. And uh, let's get this started. So I guess to start, guys, um, I will just give you a little bit of background about myself. uh, And act sort of like you don't really know who the heck I am. So uh, I grew up Jason Bruce. Uh, I go by Jay now. So if I do hear someone call me Jason, I know they either knew me when I was a little kid uh, or they don't respect me. (laughs) Uh, I've been going by Jay for about uh, 15, 20 years now. But anyway, um, just going to give you a little bit of my, I guess, my fatherhood background. So I do have four kids. Uh, My oldest is named Devontae. Uh, He's turning 18 really soon. Uh, I have LaVon, who's just turned six. I have uh, Jay Jr., who just turned three. And I have a one-year-old named Zara, uh, my only girl. Save the best for last, they say. Uh, although I do love all my kids equally. Uh, it is a little bit different now raising uh, raising a daughter. So um, I was always the boy dad. Uh, big into, you know, sports, athletics, things like that. Not that, that she won't be. Uh, but I was very sort of boy-orientated oriented so um you know having having a girl uh you know zara's really changed my life my outlook on life which isn't a bad thing uh everybody sort of grows and and matures and um you know just evolves at their own pace and um since i've had zara i think a lot of my worldviews have changed um especially you know just just you know what women go through what what girls go through um you know sort of concerned as most dads probably would be with young girls uh, as to, you know, I, I maybe, let's see, I, I think just to put it bluntly, just what the world's going to be like uh, when she's 10, 15, 20, uh, you know, but I have to let her grow and, and let her make her own mistakes and just be there sort of to pick up the pieces. Um, you know, I, I am a pretty protective dad, although she is only a baby. Uh, I do have to learn, I think, as as we grow together to sort of give her, her the space to to make those mistakes. Uh, cause as of right now, I want to just, you know, jump in and be her everything. And, uh, you know, she has a great relationship with, with her mom. She is a daddy's girl though. Um, but yeah, that, that's, I guess, fatherhood in a nutshell. You know, so as I mentioned before, um, you know, I'm going to treat this like you don't know who I am for the listeners tuning in. I don't know who's going to tune in, to be honest. So, uh, I will give you the breakdown. Uh, they do call me Jay. Jay Brew is my stage name. Uh, award-winning rapper, put my first record out in 2001, uh, called Tell Me What You Like. Uh, you know, I toured the world 12 to 15 years-ish around there. And then, you know, once I, I started to have some more kids, I really just wanted to be home more. And, uh, you know, it did change my life dramatically. I won't say in a negative light because, uh, you know, I did enjoy being home and, and raising my kids and I did see a lot of people sort of doing what I was doing, missing a lot of time, uh, you know, with their kids. So I sort of didn't want that to happen. I made some really, really, really big mistakes with my oldest son. Uh, you know, really just wasn't there the way, the way I should have been. So uh, it's made me sort of step up my, my game a little bit. Uh, so, you know, that, that's the music side. Uh, that 2001 was my first record. I was a collegiate athlete as well. I did play basketball, uh, varsity basketball for Ottawa U. Uh, go GGs and for Mount St. Vincent for two years uh, before sort of injuries, uh, you know, sort of struck, struck lightning on me. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, uh, you know, that's, I guess, a really quick rundown of, of who I am. Uh, fast forward to today. Um, and if you've never heard of Dads Canada, uh, I am the co-founder of a group called Dads Canada, Dads Against Double Standards Canada. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, things like that. Uh, under dads underscore Canada. Uh, I started this group because I did, as I mentioned, uh, have some ups and downs 
with co-parenting. Uh, but I do want to keep this podcast on a really positive and light note. Uh, I'm a big believer in energy and what you put out is what you get back. So I'm not going to touch on those stories, but I will say uh, I was reaching out to different agencies, um, you know, court system, things like that, looking for help. And there was really nothing. Uh, this isn't indicative of every city, but in Halifax at the time, I think it was 2014, 2015, there was no help. There was nothing. Um, so I sort of, sort of had to make my own help, really. Um, I emailed, I want to say, it was over 100 organizations in the city. And only two got back to me. Um, you know, sort of parlayed that into uh, a position with the North End Parent Resource Center. Uh, shout out to the ladies down there. Uh, I did some fatherhood work there. And, uh, you know, just through some of the training, I did join uh, Dad Central team as the Nova Scotia rep. Um, you know, they're doing probably some some of the best work with fatherhood involvement in Canada. But, um, you know, back to the, the my Dad's Canada group, uh, we've helped, I think it's, sorry for that, uh, I just bumped the mic. <laughs> uh, I think we're up to 417 dads locally that we've helped to this date since 2017 when we launched. Um, and when I say help, it could be anything from Christmas turkeys to clothing for the kids to just hooking up dads with maybe a family court lawyer, things like that. Uh, we're not, you know, the be all end all of dads here. I know there is some other dads groups. I haven't really connected with too many of those. Um, but if you're listening, guys, reach out, uh, guys and gals. Um, you know, I know the more, the better, the more groups, the better. We just do what we can do. And, you know, I always say to the dads that reach out to me, if I can't help you, I will find somebody that can. So that's Dads Canada. Uh, in a nutshell, like I said, that's how I get into this work. And, uh, you know, this podcast was started out of love, uh, out of just, you know, pure need, I think. Um, you know, since since COVID hit, there's been tons of podcasts started. And, uh, you know, I do listen to a fair amount of those. Uh, I am on another one, which is called The Ten Count. Uh, my name is Searle with Chris Searle and uh, Jay Perrier. We call him Jay Truth. Um, so you can listen to that. You, it's weekly or biweekly, but we, it's mostly about combat sports. Um, you know, we don't touch really too much on the, on the fatherhood side of it. It is just a sports show. Um, so I felt the need to kind of get rolling with this. Um, you know, I've had at least, I don't know, two or three dozen people asking me why I haven't started a podcast yet. So it, it is out of necessity. Uh, I am a busy man. Three of my kids are under six. So time is of the essence here. I don't have a ton of free time. Um, I am somebody that has like severe ADHD. So I often start things and don't follow through with them. So the fact that I'm, you know, sort of creating this first episode here, speaks volumes to me and uh, it's something that I'm really passionate about and uh, I just want to get this out to the world. So, um, you know, again, if you're tuning in, thank you so much. I, I just so appreciate, uh, you know, everybody listening. Tell people about it. Share, um, you know, the link if you see it on social media. Listen to it on all the platforms, Spotify and all that. Um, you know, so I did want to keep this short. My episodes are going to be about an hour. Uh, I did introduce myself and, you know, Maybe I'll get into a story now. So again, this is the first episode. Um, my story is not actually a story. I want to sort of get something off my chest uh, and have for some time. It's a realization I, I sort of came across last summer, sort of in the, uh, the initial phase of the pandemic, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. I know you know what I'm talking about anyway. Um, but again, it's not really a story. I just want to sort of maybe relay some knowledge I've, you know, come across in my head and, and I feel like we should all do. And that is, uh, I want to normalize apologizing, uh, not just to our kids, but to our parents. Uh, my mom passed away 10 years ago. Uh, I miss her dearly, dearly. I was such a, a mama's boy, but this is a fatherhood podcast. Uh, so I, you know, I'll sort of relay it to the dad side. The reason I say that is, um, you know, I, I do want to apologize to my dad. He he won't listen to this, but if anyone knows my dad and you're listening, maybe let him know I apologized. Uh, I'm sure I'll tell him myself. But um, the reason I'm saying that is, 
you know, all sort of through my late teens, maybe early twenties, you know, even into my thirties, to be honest, I, I've gotten into relationships and sort of told people how strict my dad was, um, how rough he was and not, not rough physically. Like he didn't uh, abuse us or anything, but just, you know, I had a big Afro as a kid, for example, and he would always comb my hair, pick it out. And, uh, like it hurt, you know, I was a little kid. <laughs> um, you know, another example is I stepped on a nail once running through someone's backyard and I got home and dad had like a hot water sort of bucket with uh, some Epsom salt, I think it was. And uh, I wouldn't put my foot in it because the water was too hot. So he sort of, um, he sort of just forced my foot in uh, or, you know, just sort of guided it into the water. I was fine once my foot was in there, but I just was a little bit of a wuss, um, you know. So anyway, um, you know, there's other other examples I could go through, but, uh, you know, the, the pick in the hair was always the worst one for me. Uh, but now that I do have two young sons, um, Levon is six and Junior's three. Their relationship is honestly so, so heartwarming. So amazing to see, uh, how much they love each other. Um, when they do sort of get on each other's nerves, it's, it's pretty overwhelming to be honest. Uh, Junior's in his terrible twos, like more than man probably the worst i've ever seen in a kid and he's my kid uh but yeah when he wants to say no he doesn't want to do nothing you're not convincing him and uh super super hard-headed uh levon like crazy adhd like so much energy uh but it reminds me of me and my brother jeff uh we're half brothers so my dad was married to his mom uh when they broke up he met my mom and had me pretty quickly i'm assuming because me and jeff are only a year apart uh, but I always looked, looked, always looked up to my brother. Uh, we did have a great relationship as kids. Um, you know, we still do, but, uh, you know, just wanted to mention that because my two young boys remind me a lot of myself and Jeffrey. Uh, so the reason I'm saying I want to normalize apologizing to your dad is because I basically talk shit, to be honest. I talked a lot of shit to girlfriends or, you know, whoever, just saying, oh, my dad was so rough and he was so strict and, and yada, yada, yada. Um, and it was sort of a light bulb moment went off for me last summer. Um, I had a break-in relationship. I stayed with my dad in a tiny room with my three young, young kids. Um, super, super overwhelm- overwhelming of a situation. Um, and then I ended up sort of uh, reconnecting with an old friend of mine. Uh, Dennis and moved in his apartment. Um, again, in, you know, all the kids in a room, but it was a lot bigger, a lot more freedom, uh, than my dad's place. But, uh, I guess sort of where I'm going with that is, um, with, with the two boys, they can be pretty rambunctious. So, you know, the same as my dad did with me, picking out LaVon's hair can be hell. Um, super curly hair gets knotted really easily. He's got like a faux hawk, if you know what that is, with a fade on the sides, skin fade. Um, but I would assume that they think I'm rough because, you know, he says ow all the time, uh, to put some perspective on it. If I'm getting up in the morning, I have to take the two babies to daycare, um, live on to school and then, you know, get to work for, for eight o'clock. So, you know, when I have all three kids at the same time, uh, all three younger kids, it's, it's honestly how it's, it's <laughs> the mornings are busy and they're, you know, just so overwhelming, but um, you know, last summer I'm getting the kids ready and I don't know if it was at my dad's or Dennis's at the time. Um, but I just, I was picking out LeVon's hair and I, I came to the realization that he's probably thinking what I was thinking when my dad was picking out my hair. And ever since I've sort of thought, you know, with, with each passing day, whether I'm tying their shoes or I'm just doing whatever, you know, parent, uh, whatever parents do, whatever fatherly sort of duty I'm, I'm doing at the time that I may be a little rough with them or a little impatient with them the way my dad was with me. Um, you know, my dad's a super nice guy, but uh, it's stuff you go through with your parents. You know, They're, my dad was old school. His dad was old school, super strict, kept me out of some trouble with it, with his strictness, but also um, I think in a sort of a negative side of it was I wasn't really prepared when I went away for university because I was sort of, uh, you know, someone was always looking over my shoulder uh, so when I got to university, it was like, oh my God, freedom. Let me fuck up my life real quick in a year or two, which I did. 
Uh, but I'm not going to blame my dad for that. We we need to start uh, taking responsibility for our own actions. So I just want to say apologize, uh, apologies to my dad. Um, and I hope that all you listening, especially the dads who have gone through the same thing I did, can normalize uh, apologizing to your dad. Um, in saying that, apologize in general. Uh, I had a situation today where my two boys were together. Um, my two young boys, I should say, sorry. And uh, it was just quite an overwhelming experience. They're bumping heads on the trampoline, and, and one would cry, the other one would laugh, and then get the other one more mad. And it was just like they were doing so, they were doing the most today. And, you know, I got really, really, really upset, um, yelled a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I yelled a lot, I should say, a lot more than I usually do. Um, but I took my moment with each one, I took them aside. Uh, and I apologized. Now, Junior's three. Um, I got mad and sort of, uh, you know, he was putting a little toy gun in my face and I threw it and it broke. And that's his favorite gun. He was, you know, upset. Took him aside and he's only three, but he's smart. And I said, Junior, um, you know, Daddy, sorry. I didn't mean to break your gun. I said, uh, you know, you, you got to start listening to Daddy. Daddy was losing some patience with me, with you. And, uh, you know, I do apologize. He said, okay, Daddy. And, uh, you know, he has probably 30 or 40 of these little guns, but that's not the point. I broke his favorite little gun, so I am going to buy him a new one. Um, hopefully he likes it. And uh, with LeVon, who's six, uh, he understands a little bit more. I took him aside as well, and I, you know, apologize for sort of raising my voice to him. Um, I often tell him that he he needs to be a little bit more mature uh, with Junior, because Junior looks up to LeVon like you wouldn't believe. Everything he does, he wants to do. Um but in saying that, I know he's only a child, so I, I don't like to put too much pressure. But um, the reason I'm mentioning these guys right now is just that, uh, you know, apologize to your dads, apologize to your kids, you know, just make it a, a normal thing. Because um, I sort of, like I mentioned, in my late teens, early 20s, I was a messed up kid, man. And I'm not going to blame my dad, but I, I was blaming my dad at the time for a lot of my issues. And, uh, you know, I think as most people do as humans, but as I became a father and, you know, having more and more kids, I started to realize now um, sort of sort of why my dad was the way he was. And, uh, you know, a really good friend of mine, Kevin Kinch, uh, who really started my, my sort of rap career, um, he goes up by the name of Spesh K, Halifax legend, sort of moved to Toronto. Um, I dated his sister years and years ago. I want to say 2000, uh, maybe 99, 2000, around that time. Spent a lot of time at their house, and their dad um, always used to sigh. He would just walk through the house and, uh, you know, doing that. We always made fun of him, and I never really got it. And then, you know, again, coming to the realization with my dad last year, this realization happened, you know, maybe a year before that, where I just, man, I just realized where the sigh came from, you know. He worked long, long hours. Uh, he would come home. The, you know, uh, they had three kids who were all, you know, normal, normal teens. They're all teens at the same time. He came home was probably just super overwhelmed, and uh, yeah, he would go hide in the basement for a little while, or you know, hide in the living room, watch his, his news. But uh, I want to let him know as well, Mister Kinch. I understand. <laughs> so the, those sighs are warranted. I, I've sighed a lot myself as a dad, but um, you know, that's the end of that, guys. Uh, Excuse me. I didn't want to talk too much, but uh, talking too much is something I like to do on a regular basis. Anyway, uh, this will be a more structured podcast moving forward. I will have some guests and things like that. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, this is True Fathered Stories, and I hope that you'll you'll tune in each week uh, while we just hear some amazing stories and talk to some great dads from all walks of life. Um, yeah, so again, thanks for listening, and I uh, hope you guys have a great week. And before I leave for good, I just want to drop the socials on you. Um, so dads underscore Canada on Twitter and Instagram, as well as Facebook. Um, dads Against Double Standards Canada is a Facebook group. It's a, it is a private group, uh, so you do have to um, apply to be a part of that group. And for myself, uh, it's at jbrew music for Instagram, at make jbrew famous for Twitter, and for Facebook, it's at the real jbrew. Uh, I know I should simplify that and uh, have them all the same, 
but I'm not a difficult guy. <laughs> so anyway, again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, drop me a line. The email is dadsmattercanada at gmail.com. Uh, let me know if there's some dads you want to hear on the podcast. If you have some questions, uh, you want to speak um, on any really array of topics, or you want me to speak on those, uh, just let me know, guys. And uh, yeah, again, have a great week, as I did mention before. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.